Hey guys, welcome to a brand new exciting video here at Phenomenal Creations. It's been a while, my name is VK, and hope you're all doing just fine. And I want to welcome you to a brand new exciting AEB After Effects Basics tutorial. So I hope you will enjoy this tutorial. And yeah, let's jump straight in. So before we start, I want to just thank you, thank everyone uh, who has supported my channel. I just hit somewhere around over past 3,000 subscribers. I'm almost at 3,500 subscribers, which is so freaking cool. And I want to thank everyone who has supported my channel. And if you're, if you're not one of them, hope this is one of my videos that will convince you to support it. So there will be a lot um, of stuff coming up to this channel. Um, I've been really busy. I got like test weeks and a lot of school projects going on. So I've not been able to make as much tutorials as I wished and like wanted to make. But I'm just still trying to make. I've not stopped. So yeah. So that's that's going on. So yeah. So today I will be talking about something that will make your uh, your After Effects um, experience and workflow a lot more effective and efficient. So today we'll show you how you guys use your keyboard buttons to make your effects a lot more pro. Yeah, so we're talking about keyboard shortcuts here, and I get a few here, uh, which I will talk, be, be talking about, which will get you started. And this is all my, like the basics, all you like you need to know and need to have. All right, so let's jump straight in. All right, guys. So here we have our first letter, which is the letter V, um, almost like my name, Vico. So yeah, that's that. So if you hit V on your keyboard, that will bring up the cursor tool. And what does it, what that does is that you can freely move any object, text, shape layer, or a layer or something that way so that was cursor uh, what v does so if you're in any other kind of tool like from another shortcut or from the toolbar like so the rectangle tool if you hit v on your keyboard that will like free you from that tool and you can move around and do that kind of cool stuff all right so that's the key num v so our next key is is p and this one is um these shortcuts usually have their their keyboard shortcut corresponding to what they do. So P is for position. So if you go here and select the P layer here, I just yeah still. So if you hit P on your keyboard, it will open up position like this, uh, like panels here, so you can like modify the positioning. So this will be positioning it in X and Y Y axis. So you can use position for like if you're making just a really uh, short animation here, just do some keyframes. So you can do just like X axis or I could have it like go like this. So it's a basic animation from one spot to another. Or what you can also do is you can go forward and use like a V key like we just learned and take it to this position so that it will go from here to there all right so that's p key for positioning your layer next one is s and s is for scale so if you go ahead and select s key here and hit hit the s key so we get our scale properties right there so i will see let's see that this size we have typed on is 100 percent so we can like scaled up to how you want it and if you go negative below 100 so if you go negative it will turn it 180 degrees like flip it upside down so that's that so same thing here you can create some keyframes in there and do like this so it will scale your this one so that's our scale properties all right our next one is R and R stands for rotation. So rotation goes like this. So if you hit R key on your keyboard, it takes you to rotation properties and rotation properties works like this. Like when you hit the stopwatch and you go, for example, as four seconds forward and here at this right dial, you can see how many degrees it will be rotating. So if I just want 45 degrees, so at this time, 
it will rotate 45 degrees just like that all right so you can there select a specific uh, like how many degrees it will be uh, rotating and or and then the left dial here which is which says 0x at the moment so it works like this if you may as well make a new animation there and take four seconds so this may um, decides to how many like full laps uh, like or a full uh, full rotation it does so if I type like 3 3 X so at, at this animation it will do three full 360s around like one two and three like that okay so it's stopped at this rotation because it says six but if it was zero it was still okay all right so that's the rotation all right next we have here is the key t and t doesn't have a corresponding like a name for the same letter in the beginning um, but t controls opacity so if you go ahead to a t layer and hit t you get the opacity properties and if you don't want to opacity it means it means how see-through or transparent your layer is so you can see here if i take it down you can see it gets um a zoom right here in so it will show me like here in the dials percentage how transparent it is so if you want a, a cool fade out you can go ahead and create um, animation and take from 100 to 0 so it will like fade out like this and you can always do the the other way so it fades in if you want all right cool so that's opacity then what we have here is Y and Y is pretty interesting because it doesn't like I have um, that kind of property it's too it's like the T one it doesn't have a corresponding letter so but it will control it's the pan behind tool so it controls the anchor point so what's the anchor point the anchor point is right there in the middle you can see this little cross there like a little crossfire from Call of Duty or Battlefield <laughs> doesn't matter so what we do here is with the Y key if you hit Y it's not it doesn't have any properties it's a it's this tool right there the pan behind tool or anchor point tool so it, if you click on the anchor point you can move it around but um, all right so now you may might be wondering um, why would I ever need to move my anchor point isn't that like just like who needs that so the anchor point is controlling how the other controls control the layer okay that's really random but for example if you want to rotate it so it will always rotate around the anchor point so for example now it wins dead in the middle if I go ahead and rotate this you can see it rotates in the middle like this one all right but if I go ahead and move this and if I hold control or command it will snap into places like these corners all the way down there and now rotate it you can see it rotates around that point so you can create really cool stuff by this but rotation is not the only thing also scale works with this so if I go with scale it will scale up for from that point I'm gonna show you so I can take it to this corner or like that right there so it will be scaling from that point yeah so you can move this free layer at this, or you can hold command to snap it uh, and make it stuck on some of the corners or lines. So there and scale from middle end, right there. Okay, pretty simple. All right, so this will not affect positioning or opacity. It doesn't matter where you put the anchor point in those kind of animations, but scale and rotation, it does matter. All right, uh, what do we have next? The letter g so what does g do it's yeah, as the two previous one doesn't have a corresponding letter to its function but it's the masking tool and masking tool is used a lot on this channel so masking i will take masking like um um the the fact itself the masking itself i will take into a separate a b tutorial but now i will just show you 
what it can do. So if you have G on your keyboard, you take our left pencil and get this pen symbol. If you don't want to use G, which this video is kind of like pointing you at, like using shortcuts, you can go up here in the toolbar and hit the G key. So that will mask, you can create a mask right there. You can create a little box, for example, like this, and that will like restrict that box or that letter inside that box. That's like making a mask around it. So if you go ahead and select your uh, mask layer and hit M, you can get some mask options. So if I go ahead and go from add to subtract, it will subtract that box from the whole layer. Or you can just use inverted. You can do whatever you feel like this, for example. And then you can animate the mask path if you want, like these small boxes, you can animate them to move differently, so, like this. So you can almost like create a cool logo, <laughs> I don't know. So that's that. So hey, that was a few shortcuts, hope you all learned something cool about this. <laughs> it's a total mess after my example, but still, thank you for watching this tutorial. And if you want to show some love, so go right there and type something cool in the comments. What do you want to see next? What do you like with the tutorial? And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I will love you forever if you do that. Because my channel is a growing community and it's really cool. And I got a lot of followers and subscribers. So if you want to go ahead and so please consider subscribing. It's right there. And I hope you guys are having... A really a really good day so yeah see you guys in the next one stay awesome